What's up, YouTubers? Today I'll be reviewing a 1991 Bowman baseball box that I picked up on eBay for $31. I didn't buy a lot of 91 Bowman just because, as a kid, 89 and 90 Bowman were pretty boring and very basic. So when 91 came around, I didn't spend a lot of my money on it. I bought maybe a handful of packs, and that was about it. So a lot of the star cards and the rookies I am missing from the set. So I was hunting the five future Hall of Fame rookies of Chipper Jones, uh, Yvonne Rodriguez, Mike Mussina, Jeff Bagwell, and Jim Tomei. Of those guys, I was missing the Chipper Jones and the Jim Tomei. I did pull the Chipper Jones, though, out of my box. That was the only uh, one of those rookies that I did pull out of this entire box, so kind of uh, a dud there. You can see the centering on that's about 60-40, but I was able to add that to my collection. So, But out of the 704 cards in the base set for uh, 91 Bowman, there are 166 rookie cards, so quite a lot of rookies to chase after. Uh, it wouldn't be until 1997 that Bowman would adopt the home of the rookie card as their tagline. So, But I've pulled all the stars and all the interesting cards, and i got some nicknames and some fun stuff to look at. So uh, let's go ahead and review this box. I've got uh, my stacks over here to the side, and we'll start with uh, the star cards that I pulled and Hall of Famers. Actually, these are just the Hall of Famers, I believe. Here we got uh, Jack Morris. Boggs, a couple of Boggs, Robbie Alomar spitting in the Empire's face, Ricky Henderson, Smoltz, the Hawk, Andre Dawson catching a very oblong baseball there, two of the Hawk, Dave Winfield, Eck, Tony Gwynn, the Bat Boy, Craig Biggio, looking uh, very young there, try not to get the glare from my YouTube light that I bought, the Goose, the Kid, the Wizard, Edgar Martinez, the Big Hurt, Carlton Fisk signing a baseball, and uh, King Griffey Jr., which I did not have this one. And unfortunately, it's the only one I pulled from the box, and it's got a huge stick of gum just permanently implanted on the back. The other handful of cards that I pulled that had gum, I pulled it off, and it just totally mangled the back of it. I've heard that you can put this in the fridge or the freezer, and the gum will pop off, so I will try that, and we'll see how that works out for me. So that was all my Hall of Famers. And the set starts off with a five-card retrospective Rod Carew uh, look, I guess. I don't know. And uh, I was able to pull all five of those with no duplicates, so those are the only five that I pulled. second one there has got a nice photo of Rod Carew. There's the third, fourth, and the fifth card with a nice shot there. And it, each back has uh, tidbits on his career, 15-time uh, All-Star, and he batted 300 for 15 consecutive seasons, so that's pretty amazing. Rod Carew, one of the all-time great hitters. And then uh, these were my non-Hall of Fame stars. we got Palmero, Mattingly, Dale Murphy, should be in the Hall. Eric uh, I.R. Davis, or I.L. Davis. Back when I was a kid, it was the uh, disabled list, but that's hurtful to disabled people. Matt Williams, Doc Gooden. Big Mac, Gary Sheffield, and Clemens. Some of these guys will eventually be in the Hall of Fame, I believe. But as of right now, they are not. And 1991 Bowman was one of the first sets to introduce gold stamping on some of the cards. This was a subset uh, of Silver Sluggers, an award that was given away in the American League and the National League since 1980 to each position, the best hitter at each position. Um... And this is the first subset of any name brand base set that uh, devoted an entire section to the Silver Sluggers, which is kind of interesting considering it had been an award for well over a decade. But uh, we got Ellis Burks, Don Robinson, Lance Parrish, Kelly Hans Gruber, Benny Santiago, Bobby Benilla still cashing them paychecks from the New York Mets, crazy, Matt Williams, Alan Trammell, Jose Canseco, Daryl Strawberry, Barry Larkin, Eddie Murray, Ricky Henderson with no batting gloves, and Ryan Sandberg. That was the Silver Sluggers, interestingly, with gold stamping rather than silver stamping. But those were uh, pretty neat inserts or subset. They weren't actually an insert, but you did get one gold stamped card per pack. But uh, actually the packaging never mentioned that you do get one of those. They also had a Ricky Henderson uh, Super Bowl champ. That's stolen bases, obviously. They had the shot heard around the world commemorating uh, Bobby Thompson's uh, pennant-winning home run off Ralph Bronca of the Dodgers in 1951. In, uh, I believe that was the third game of a three-game series that was 
the shot heard around the world. And then Colin Powell, rookie card. He threw out the first pitch for the Yankees in 91. And they uh, made a sweet Colin Powell rookie card there with the U.S. and the four stars in gold up there. And uh, this is just to show the difference between 1991 Bowman and uh, what they did for improvements going into 1992, which is, was, of course, the landmark set, one of the most important sets of the 90s. Uh, I've got Bernie Williams here to show the difference. We had 91, which was the last year they did cardboard stock, and then 92 when they went to the white stock and UV-coated fronts. Obviously, in the light, they both look UV-coated, but uh, these obviously are not, and these are. And then here's the back to show you that they still went with the team-by-team -team breakdown, but uh, the production value of 1992 was much better. And 1992 was actually only made to order uh, to vendors and dealers, so the production run was a lot smaller than, obviously, the three years prior to 1992. So, But that just shows the quality of the, the two cards from 91 to 92. So let's go ahead and jump into... The gold stamped MVPs, they did these for all the minor league MVPs. So you had a lot of up and coming prospects here with the gold stamped MVP up in the upper left corner. And of course, a lot of these guys, since they were minor league prospects, they weren't in their major league uniform. So I think a majority of these are airbrushed. So we've got Benny the Jet Rodriguez, who of course uh, outpickled the beast in the Sandlot. We've got Reggie Sanders, who actually went on to have a pretty decent Major League career. I believe he had uh, over 1,500 career hits. we got Jeff Conine with the Royals, another good career. Uh, almost, uh, he was Mr. Marlin for a long time. First real superstar, I think, of the Florida Marlins. We've got Hensley Bam Bam Mullins. Domingo Moda looking like a watercolor painting, how uh, airbrushed that whole card looks. Mark Newfield, he was a first round draft pick. I remember his 1991 Tops card. Michael Gary Scott, uh, who went on to run a paper company in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Juan Gonzalez before the steroids and before he actually had a real Rangers uniform and helmet because that is savagely airbrushed. Sam Militello for the Yankees. Todd Gugiana, I don't even know how to pronounce his last name because that is probably his only card. Very, very airbrushed there. Paul Russo, also very airbrushed. Uh, Frank Bolick uh, with the Mariners. That is obviously airbrushed as well. These guys all look like they're watercolor paintings or something. Matt Mieske with the Padres. And the very last card is by far the worst one, Tim Howard. That looks like an artist's rendition, like a courtroom artist's painting of what Tim Howard looks like. And if I'm not mistaken, this is his only baseball card. So I'm sure Tim shows that off with pride to all his friends. So that was all the minor league MVP cards that I pulled. Those were actually really a lot of fun to pull looking at all those guys. Uh, now I've got uh, some nicknames that I always like to do. We've got Eric Umbop Hansen hanging with Eric Shaw. Marty Grin and Barrett, as he obviously is. Tom Never's going to make it to the majors. Real Comer. Dick Thong. Paul Assmuncher. Advanced Law Degree. Dante Big Shit. And Dave Valet Parking. So those are some nicknames there. I used to do that when I was a kid, and uh, I still do. So here's just some fun cards that I ran across that I thought were funny or interesting in some way. Mike Harkey looks like he's in timeout behind the fence, so look kind of sad there. Carl Everett, that's actually his mugshot uh, from uh, 1990. Terry Leach throwing his 80-mile-an-hour heater right at you. I pulled this card, and I said, wait a minute, that's not Dean Palmer. Dean Palmer was right-handed, and that doesn't look anything like Dean Palmer. And then I pulled a Dan Peltier, and I said, wait a minute. We've got an imposter here, so Dan has two cards. These two cards were interesting. I looked at these pretty close, and obviously these were cropped from probably a team photo. That's why they look really grainy and not quite in focus, because they focused in on a single player rather than the team. So Mike Lieberthal and Kurt Miller. I thought those were pretty funny. Uh, Brett Boone before the steroids. This guy got huge. Here he's about 170 pounds. Charlie Old Man Huff, here he was already about 43, but he went on to pitch another decade, so good for Charlie. 
Doug Jones looking like uh, a Dr. Seuss character, all mustache, no mouth whatsoever. <laughs> Zane Smith, I don't know why, I just thought this guard was funny. Uh, Zane looks really pleased there to have his picture taken in spring training. Terry Pendleton looks like he walked into like a Ron Grant Ron Gant crop dust or something there. He just looks like he smells something pretty nasty. And a jar Sedania waiting for the bathroom to clear up because he's next in line. Jose Escobar, we all know he really wasn't on the Indians for his hitting ability. He was the drug mule of the team. And uh, Yvonne Cruz, bless his heart, he was born with the de debilitating disease of, I believe, what is known in the medical community as old man face. In this picture, he is 22 years old. I'm 42, and this guy could pass as my dad, so I hope Yvonne is doing okay, because now he's probably looking probably 90 years old. And we have Greg Gagne with probably the gayest ever shortstop to second base exchange captured on a baseball card in the history of baseball cards. So it's almost like you can hear him grunting and going, eh, as he makes that toss to second base. Greg Gagne. And of course, I mentioned 166 rookie cards in the Bowman set, and a lot of them are uh, unknowns, like Jerry Shunk protruding his rather big uh, jock strap out there. I guess Jerry's showing his shunk in the trunk there. Tyler Houston. I don't recall if any of these guys ever made it to the big leagues. If they did, they obviously didn't make a big enough dent because I do not remember. So you can let me know in the comments if Tyler Houston made it to the big leagues or not. Or even Warren Cromarty with the Royals. Or Aaron Holbert, not for lack of effort. Tony Longmire looks kind of scared on that card. We've got Huge Walker with the Royals. Dan Howitt, I do remember making it to the bigs, but uh, he's got such a sweet 70s porno stash on that card, I had to throw it in here. Dana Allison, who showed up to spring training in tip-top condition. Adam Haizu, I'm from the Bay Area, and I don't recall this guy at all, but uh, there's Adam Haizu. Mike Humphreys with the Yankees. Johnny Hard with the Giants trying to grow a mustache. Greg Smith, pretty plain name, but a nice shot with the all blue background there. Gilberto Reyes with the Expos. Scott Champrino, I think with the Rangers there, letting you know uh, that he's trimmed up his mustache hair so you can see up there. And last but not least, we got the jerk Steve Martin in a horribly airbrushed Padres hat and jersey there. So that is my review of 1991 Bowman. Uh, overall, it was a pretty fun rip. Uh, I was a little uh, unpleased with only pulling one of the rookie cards, Chipper Jones. I didn't pull any of the others, and I was happy to pull that Rod Carew set. I love collecting Hall of Famers, and uh, pulling one of each was pretty nice. So overall, the box was really fun to rip. I had a lot of fun going through them. Uh, interesting side note, the King Griffey Jr. card that I have with the gum on the back. The King Griffey Sr. is also numbered 246. He was supposed to be number 255. So if you're a set builder and you're like, where the hell's card number 255? It's actually supposed to be King Griffey Sr. So I'll put that in the freezer and see if I can get that gum off and add that to my Ken Griffey collection. And uh, I thought these cards were really cool. The, the Ricky Anderson Stolen Base King the uh, shot heard around the world card and then the Colin Powell rookie. So, but overall it was a really fun box to open. Well worth the $31. Uh, so uh, check them out if you get a chance or uh, let me know in the comments if you've got any stories about 1991 Bowman. And uh, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.